In December 1940 and February 1941, British and Commonwealth troops had swept across Libya, driving back the Italian occupiers. But just as General Wavell's army was about to attack the last Italian stronghold of Tripoli, Churchill ordered him to send the majority of his men to Greece to help fight the Italian invaders there. This left only a small force in North Africa to defend Allied conquests. On the 12th of February 1941, while many of Wavell's North African troops were embarking for Greece, a dashing German cavalry officer landed in Tripoli. Lieutenant General Erwin Rommel had been sent with just one reconnaissance and one anti-tank battalion to help the faltering Italians. Rommel's battle secretary was Rolf Munninger. As a well, I thought then, as I still do today, that it was a friendly favour to Mussolini. Mussolini had signalled, we're in great difficulty, and the plan was only to send a small expeditionary force. Many of the young German soldiers had an idealized view of Africa. Now, as teenagers, we had already read things about Africa and learned about it at school, too. Now we thought, well, there's all these tropical fruits, plenty of them. No, there was nothing. There was only sand, stones, and this heat. The Desert Rats of the 7th Armoured Division were getting news about the arrival of their new opponents. We'd advanced as far as we could to this place called uh, um, Bide Farm. And we knew the Germans would, had arrived. We, we'd received intelligence reports that they were arriving at Tripoli. And they obviously were coming with tanks. Now in front of us was the salt marshes. They're very difficult to traverse unless you know your way through them. So we would have tanks spread out along our side of the salt marshes, knowing that if enemy were going to advance, they'd have to come through certain areas of the salt marshes, otherwise they'd get bogged down in the sand, you see. And I was sitting in the tank, and we got orders that if the Germans were sighted, we were to send the code word laxative. I always remember it, I thought it was British humour at its best, because it, we, although we wouldn't need laxative, actually, <laughs> Not, not for that purpose. The Germans would be enough, I think. And the first vehicle I saw was an eight-wheeler armoured car. And the, the Italians didn't have eight-wheeler armoured cars, and neither did we, so I realised when I looked through my binoculars that they were Germans. And we all instantaneously said, the Jerrys, the Jerrys have arrived, you see. Well, shortly after that we got dive-bombed, with Stuka dive-bombers. We had very little equipment. We were using Italian tanks because we hadn't any tanks, our own tanks, we hadn't any. Most of the good material had gone to Greece. And we'd taken over these tanks, which we'd knocked out earlier, and we patched them up, and we're using them against the enemy. We eventually came in contact with the Germans. It was a very short encounter, because we'd nothing to really fight with, and we set off all the way back to Tobruk. Every, every few miles, the Stuka bombers would come and die bombers or Stratford. And we had no air support, it was terrible really. All you could see was burning vehicles and uh, we would sort of leave the, leave the road because there's one main road which runs right along the coast all the way from Tobruk to Tripoli. But to travel on that road was death because the, the, the Stukas were just patrolling the road and dive bombing machine gun and everything they could see. So we went out in the desert and kept the road in sight. And during the daytime, we hid in the hills, 
camouflage the vehicle hidden in the hills, and men travelled at night by the stars, and we kept the road in, in sight to see how far the Germans were. So we kept ahead of the Germans, you see, till we eventually got back to Tobruk. While the British fell back on Tobruk, the Germans were getting to know their Italian allies. The Italians. I have to confess, we were a little bit arrogant towards the Italians, but unfairly so. They were badly equipped, they had worse rations than us, and poor leadership. The Germans, on the other hand, had Rommel, later christened the Desert Fox. Although ordered not to attempt an offensive until reinforcements arrived, hanging about was not in his character. Well, I had an admiration for Rommel's capacity to, uh, um, to achieve what is perhaps the most important, certainly tactical element in war, which is surprise. Uh, I mean, he was always... Uh, 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 surprising us. Rommel was always up at the front. Normally a general leading his troops would be a few kilometers away from the front with his staff. But Rommel was like that. He was a classic front-line general. We had perhaps ten vehicles in our group and he gave us precise orders how we were to act and what we were to do, just like a troop commander. At every halt we had to disperse and dig in immediately, never mind whether it was for five minutes or for an hour. Then, at the beginning of the campaign, when the planes weren't yet armoured underneath, he would say, you should all have your guns at the ready, and if a low-flying plane comes overhead, everyone shoots it. That's what it was like with Rommel. And if today you ask anyone from the Africa Corps where they were, then they'll answer, with Rommel. The soldiers would say, if Rommel is there, we'll get through. Nothing will happen to us. Of course, it wasn't true, but that's how it was.